Hello everyone. Welcome to welcome to the WS2 Enterprise Integrator webinar series 2019. So I am Prabhushi Samrakon from WS2 Integration team. Here with me, Rosan Silver from the integration team. So today uh, we will be discussing on how WS2 Enterprise Integrator provides uh, its end user with the connected developer ex experience when developing their business solution. So in today's agenda, first we will have a brief recap on the importance of agility for a business platform and how uh, the disconnectivity has become a burden for the developer. Then uh, we will be looking into the aspects of WS2 Enterprise Integrator to cater uh, integrated developer experience. Finally, uh, we will bring you with a demonstration on uh, building a CI-CD pipeline using WSO2 EEI uh, to address a real-world scenario. So um, nowadays, uh, following uh, agile methodologies uh, rather than the conventional single iteration methodology, methodology has become vital uh, because of the rapid changes happen in the industry. A company needs to like rapidly respond to those changes in in the internal or external environment without uh, losing their business momentum. So, so one of the importance in agile approaches is adaptability. It allows uh, adjusting to new changes quickly without falling behind in their competition. And also, uh, it focuses more on the people where they can communicate and make changes because of its uh, flexibility. So since uh, there are many iterations in the process, following best practices can gain you high quality and also it will result in higher performance in the long run. Even though agile methods can uh, gain you many benefits uh, rather the than the conventional single iteration approach, it can be challenging to maintain such project, for such method. It is uh, essential to pick the correct methodology as the studies have uh, proven that agile methods can be like, result lower performance with small scale projects. And also uh, being unable to estimate uh, for a certain, uh, for the uncertain future can increase the overhead in the uh, long run. Another uh, critical factor is not having uh, a well-defined or a comprehensive flow can burden the developer as there, there will be many iterations within the process. So WSO2 Enterprise Integrator uh, presents a comprehensive integration solution along with its tools to provide the end user with a rich developer experience while implementing their business scenarios. So a WC2 EI is uh, connect, consisted of the ESB runtime included with the data service capabilities. In addition to that, uh, it, has a it has separate profiles for message brokering, business process management, and monitoring. And uh, WC2 EI introduced the WSN micro integrator as a separate distribution to address uh, con container native requirements in the integration domain. And WS2 integration studio comes as the developer tool to develop integration scenarios for both uh, enterprise integrator and micro integrator. So when it comes to the developer experience, it can be categorized under each phase in the development cycle. So in order to provide the developer with a rich and connected experience, the tool should uh, support and provide all the resources for all the uh, phases in the development cycle, including the design, development, debug, test, and deploy phase. So, uh, Let's take a real world scenario and see how WSO2 Enterprise Integrator incorporates all these requirements and de develop a complete and continual uh, integration solution. So let's assume uh, the coffee shop has a legacy order management system, uh, which is a SOAP service. 
and now they want to expose uh, two abis one to place an order and another to cancel an order so let's design this requirement uh, so as shown in this diagram uh, the place order api should create a file before uh, in sending to the legacy backend for uh, printing purposes and the second api uh, again needs to call the legacy system to process and cancel the order so uh, wc2 ei comes with a set of inbuilt artifacts and mediators uh, which are capable of addressing units of integration such as uh, message transformation, routing, filtering, etc. Also, it has uh, pre built uh, connectors which provide integration with widely used systems such as uh, Gmail, Facebook, uh, Salesforce, etc. And furthermore, it has uh, extendable points. Uh, such as class mediators, custom medias to uh, address custom scenarios. And now we can uh, use those inbuilt resources and easily develop our scenario using WS2 Integration Studio. So Integration Studio provides uh, error correction on the developed integration flow using its debugger. As a previous webinar, debugging uh, integration flows discussed, uh, uh, we can debug the artifacts using the embedded, embedded micro, micro integrator or a remote server or on a server added via the integration studio. So, in the upcoming Integration Studio release, uh, WS2 EI team is planning to introduce the Synapse uh, testing framework. Uh, this uh, new feature will provide the capability to test the implemented artifacts and uh, build them within the, the CICD pipeline. And it will allow adding uh, test cases and mock services for the test artifacts. And WSO2 uses the Carbon Archive or what we call the car applications as the deployable artifact for the carbon product. So WSO2 has a car deployer Maven plugin, which can be used to deploy artifacts onto a server. In addition to uh, that, uh, as our previous webinar on uh, container native and cloud-based enterprise integration described uh, that uh, Integration Studio facilitates three other methods that can be used to deploy like, implemented artifacts uh, via the tooling itself. Uh, one approach is using uh, the Docker deployment, and other methods are deploying in an added or a remote connected server or using um, and hosting on the WS2 integration cloud. So as we as discussed at the beginning, uh, we need to cater all the changes in an agile environment. And also we need to make the life easy for the developer. So uh, we can achieve both of these requirements using a CI CD or continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline as shown in this diagram. In the conventional approach, uh, developer has to make all the changes and manually test it and then manually deploy deploy it to the uh, end or the production environment whenever there's a new requirement in the system. So when we integrate it with the CICD pipeline, developer just need to make the changes and commit it to the source repository. All the following uh, processes will be automated and it will uh, save time as well as improve the productivity in the whole team. Uh, once uh, these are integration artifacts are exchanged and committed to the source repository, uh, a continuous integration tool such as Jenkins can be configured to trigger a build job automatically whenever there is a new change in the source repository. Uh, so this build job will run all the tests against the new changes and uh, 
if all the test cases are passing, the new changes will be committed to the uh, QA or a production environment. So let's move on to the demonstration on implementing a CI-CD pipeline with WOC2 Enterprise Integrator. Let's discuss this scenario. Uh, let's develop this scenario from our from WS Enterprise Integrator and deploy it into the micro integrator. So, so this scenario is based on a coffee order management system. First, the user users can send a request to order a coffee to the EI server. So it will create a file to print the order. And then it will call the uh, SOAP backend and place the order and get the response back to the EI and then respond back to the client. And the second scenario is user send a cancel request. So it will send the cancel request to the legacy order management system and it will respond with the SOAP message and it will respond it back to the client. So let's make this scenario using our enterprise integrator studio. So we have uh, a screencast recorded for this scenario. Let's see how to um, develop this scenario. So let's start with a fresh workspace. So for this project, we are going to create a Maven multi-module project because we will have a like several modules in this project. So let's name this as a group group ideas com dot coffee shop. Now let's first add a ESB config project. That will be the Synapse configuration that we are giving into the server. So let's name the project as um, Coffee Shop Project. That will add a ESP solution project. And now we are adding a REST API. That's our requirement. So we'll add a new Synapse REST API. Synapse API. So let's name the project as Coffee Shop API. And the context we are giving Coffee Dash Shop. That would be the um, context of that API. So the users need to send the request to this context. So now let's add a uh, log mediator first that will log the, that will print a log in, in the server console saying that the request came from a client. So let's add a message saying that it's an incoming message incoming request here. Now let's add a clone mediator. The idea here is to um, do par uh, the, we have to uh, send the request to the SOAP backend and in the meantime we have to uh, send the request to the file actually to write into a file so that in this case, the file operations might like take a bit longer time. So we are doing it parallelly in the, from using the clone mediator. It will clone the message to two messages. Then one will call to the SOAP backend. In the meantime, second one will call to the second one will create a file inside our uh, file system that would be useful for coffee, coffee shop to print the order. So let's see how to um, call the backend first. First, we are adding a data mapper mediator that will transform the message from JSON to XML. For that, we need to have a registry resource project that is to uh, give, save the configurations of data mapper and endpoints in a separate project. This will be beneficial for you if you are using the same Synapse configuration in different environments. For example, say uh, you are you are having a QA environment and you have production environment, so endpoints might differ. So if you have this registry project-based configuration, 
you can easily change in between those environments. So let's name the configuration as in the data mapper as coffee shop data mapper. And this is the data mapper view. We are first uh, giving a request JSON in as the input format, and then output format will be an XML. It's based at the we are also giving that. Now we need to map the name from JSON to XML. Similarly, we are mapping ID and price. And this is the data transformation that we are doing. Since the request is coming as JSON and response is, of course, we need XML to call this off back in. Now, after configuring data, the data mapper transform mediator, we are adding a call mediator that to that is to uh, call the legacy soap backend. Now, the soap backend uh, endpoint we are going to save in the registry, of course, because it might be useful. Now, um, let me name it as the coffee shop um, legacy backend. So, it's easy to connect this to. So now we have that created uh, so shop, coffee shop legacy backend here. So we are going to give a URI that is the backend URI, so backend URI. So this is in, in port 82, 83, that's run, running as a legacy soap service. So we are giving that URI to this endpoint. No. Now we are going to add a new um, name endpoint inside the call mediator to make a reference to the endpoint to our created new um, SOAP legacy backend endpoint. And next we are going to respond back to the client but, uh, with the SOAP backend response message that is coming after the call mediator. Now in the second in the second case we need to save it, it, it to a file system. So the request should be saved as a file inside the file system. So for this we need um, the body the message context body. So the, the message body we are saving it as a property named payload and next we are having a source URL property that is to name the file. Basically that file name should contain the file path and, and a name. So for that we are going to give a um, property. So let me copy the file required file location location from my file explorer so so this is the file URI so we are going to give that URL plus we are going to use the timestamp as the file name so to get the file name we have this property so we can use that to get the current date and time so we are going to concat those two and make a file name. So this will be useful in the create file mediator. So for this we need to have a um, connector. Actually we are going to get the file connector from the connector store. We can search it for file and we have this file connector. You can download it using this window and after a moment yeah the connector will be downloaded and then you can use that connectors mediators that is file create mediator so this will create a file inside the file system so the source is the path and the file name so we have it as a property so we are going to get that property from the context so we have the property name so source URI 
that is a file name actually so we are going to give it as a source so next we are going to give the content to write into the file that is the body message body so we have save it as the um, payload property so we are getting it here so after that we are going to drop that message because we no need no longer needed that message inside that clone file so here we are So here we are changing the URI template to place order. So the context, so if you are referring, you're going to place an order, you need to go to this coffee shop as place order. That's the first resource for this API. So the second resource is to remove an existing order. So that would be coffee shop dash remove order. So inside this resource also, we are going to add a sequence. First, we are going to add a log. So that will, that will log in the server console, saying that uh, order cancellation request came to this server. So we are going to log it as a message, um, as a remove request. So then we are going to use a payload factory mediator here. So that will create a new payload to call the soap back in. Since this is a remove order, we need only single argument. So this is the soap, um, soap message format that we needed for a backend call. So this contains only one parameter that is ID. So we are going to get that um, from the message actually, from the users, the client's message. So we'll get it as ID. And with that um, payload, we are going to call the backend so that we have already created the backend endpoint. So we are going to refer that. So we are going to refer the legacy coffee shop backend we already created inside the registry project. Then finally, we are going to respond back to the client saying that the request cancellation was successful. So now we are adding a connector exporter project here. So the main idea is to, um, the, we have added a connector into our workspace. Now we need to export it into the server. So the server should have the um, related artifact to this connector, basically the file connector. So we need to export that connector to uh, via this uh, connector export project. We definitely, we need this type of export project if we are using connectors. So connect export project, we are going to name it as um, Let me name it as Coffee Shop Connect Export Project. Now we are going to add, a, add the um, file connector to this project. This is the file connector we have selected from the workspace. Now the Connect Export Project will have that file connector. Now we need to have a composite application project that is to export these uh, artifacts, these artifacts to the server. So this artifact, the, the composite art application should have all the um, coffee shop related projects. So first one is the coffee shop ESP config project, of course. And then we need to have the registry project that we use to um, save the endpoints and stuff. And then finally, the connect export project. So we are going to select all the dependencies. And we are going to name this composite application as coffee, coffee shop project composite application.
now we can uh, as a developer we tend to design and then develop and then we are trying to uh, test it within like within the ide itself before deploying or committing it to it so we are trying to test it so with this new developer studio you have the facility to test it like using the tool itself so we just click only one button then the server is running with this configuration so we can send a request to this in the api and see whether it responds back with the correct expected behavior so we are going to um, call the api with this payload and uh, check whether it works so it successfully returns the required like expected output so that means it's okay um, so we can go ahead the next thing is that um, that we have the created file inside our file structure so this is the um, file content so so it that means that it means that we have like successfully created our project so now now the next thing we should do is to um, say if we have some mistake in the mediation flow we need to debug that is also like very simple with this new ide so we just need to click a single button after selecting the project we can select the debug and then it will run in the debug mode so in this debug mode if we send a request and if we have a breakpoint it will click to that main breakpoint and then you can debug and then you can see the message in below and all the related like synapse level uh, properties etc you can see see in this debug perspective so in case if you have some made you if you made some mistake in the debug in the mediation flow you can debug it and fix it there so if you finally um, if you are confident about your artifact or the or the project then you need to write test cases for this one so this is a new feature that we are going to introduce in the next release so with, with this one we are having a like beta version like developer preview for internal wso2 even so we are going to just demonstrate this how how this works so maybe you don't have this facility at this at the moment so probably the next series we are going to ship this so in this case we need to have a test so so that we are selecting the required artifact then we of course can create a mock service within this tool so this mock service will be the replacement for legacy soap back in when we are testing it so test cases um, should like we can have mock service so first we are giving a name for this mock service suite. so let's name it as copy so backend mock suite. so mocking endpoint name we can give any mocking endpoint name here so let me so we are going to name the mocking endpoint as legacy backend And the service port we are having port 8283 and mock service context we can give the context of the mock service and then we are going to give a resource for that mock service so we are going this legacy backend resource so the service method is post and here we can have the response payload of course what payload should be should return the, from this mock service so this is the required uh, response from the backend so we are going to give it to this mock service so it would respond with that um, mock response so we are going to add that mock service as a dependency for our test suite and then finally we are going to create a test case 
we are going to be going to create a one single test case for this one so we are going to test the main flow or basically the main creating an order api resource so let's first read the resource path and then select the resource method and we are giving the input payload that is what what we are going to send as a payload to test this, this one so this is the uh, this is a sample input payload we are going to give it to this test case and we are going to assert whether the expected output is coming with the body so this is the expected output so we are going to give that expected output and finally we are going to give an error message if, in case if this fails the, the users will be able to see this error message so if you have multiple test cases it would be great to have such kind of a, like error messages so you can locate the error from the error load. so after creating the test cases so we are going to um, commit these files to git so this git we are going to use as the source code management uh, platform so so let, let let's create a repository to check this one let's name it as so wso2 agile demo so after creating the repository we are, we are getting the repository link and we are going to uh, add this project to that repository so we are adding the repository as the origin so we can see that inside the maven multimedia project there are like several projects basically four projects and we are going to add all those projects into github then we are committing that and finally we are going to push it to the github so now we have our, our artifacts in the github so so this will be very useful to manage the source code with the build system like jenkins so we are going to demonstrate the, the cicd pipeline with this jenkins server so here is a jenkins fresh server now we are going to um, add a first project as build that is to build the project from the github source code so so that we need to give the github url and after that we are going to, um, to we are going to build this project for that we are going to add a maven top level target that is to maven give Maven build. Um, so let me add the goal as um, compile. So this, yeah. So this project will build the uh, given project, and then we are going to add a new item. That is to test the artifacts. So let's name this as test. So here, this one is also we need to select the source code management as GitHub with URL. 
so here we are going to at the top level maven target as maven test so we are going to give them goals as test So finally, we are going to uh, we need to deploy the created artifacts so that we need to have a uh, project called like Jenkins project to deploy. So we are going to in this case we are going to uh, deploy it in our local server so that we can do it via the, by executing a shell command. So we have this uh, sample shell commands that that would uh, deploy the created artifact to our server. So this will um, basically fetch the uh, GitHub repository, and after building that, it will give the it will deploy the composite applications into a micro indicator instance, and it will start that server. So now we have all three required. Um, Jenkins projects. So now let's create a, a pipeline for all these three like build, test, and deploy. So let's name the pipeline. So for this pipeline, first let's select the initial job as bin. So we start with the bin, and then we need to uh, create the create the like upstream and downstream projects for this bin. So let's add the test build as after uh, after build success, we are going to run the test. For that, we are going to make make the build triggers. After build after projects are built. So in here we are going to give uh, build so that after a successful build, this will be triggered. Then we are going to uh, deploy it if the tests are successful. That is the like um, expected uh, procedure for developing. A project so if the project is the say the project is successful and test all the tests are passed we can deploy it say in our queue like queue environment or if you are like ready you can deploy it into a production environment so here if you are running the pipeline it will first build and if, our, if, if the build is success and then it will run the test so in this one we are having uh, synapse test cases so if the test cases are passed then we are going to deploy it into our local server using this uh, jenkins ci cd tool finally we are going to deploy it so the whole process is automated so the, the developers so it's like hassle free for developers so they just need to uh, develop using ide and community key into git so github will automatically will trigger a bin in jenkins if we configure the hooks and other stuff so developers like work is made like very easy if you are having this kind of uh, uh, ci cd like continuous integration um, and continuous uh, deployment pattern so this would be like very useful. So since the world is moving towards agile developments, so the requirements usually tend to change. So that if you have this kind of um, CI/CD pipeline, it, it will be very useful for developers. So you can see that finally we have like successful build, and we have deployed the service using this Jenkins pipeline. So we can send a request and see. So, so that will be a first part. So let's move on to the 
slides. So now let's discuss if, if, if um, the, the requirement is changed. Say your business partner is asking the developers to um, add a new same uh, add a new requirement. Um, in that in this case, if say if the business um, partner is asking the, the solution providers to add a new resource to update an order, update order. Say for coffee order, you need to update the request. For that, you need to have a new resource, API resource. So we already have an API. Now we need to update that API. Uh, for that, let's see how we can do with our like C, uh, CI/CD pipeline and the developer studio. Let's see a recorded stream class for that. So we have already have the project what we have created earlier. Now the developer just need to add a new resource for this new requirement uh, to change an existing order or to update an existing order. Now let's add a log mediator for here as well, just to see if, if some requests can come to this resource. So this URI also we are going to URI template. We are going to name it as update request. So all the requests, update re all the requests should come to this URI. So we also we are going to add a payload factory. That is to uh, make the this is to create the payload to the SOAP backend. So this is the required SOAP backend format. We have pasted it. To the payload so here also we are having several arguments to that payload so we are going to give the arguments using the uh, request so let me add the first argument as the id so we are going to get it from the message body ID. and similarly we can add the required arguments And finally, we are going to call to the SOAP backend with this new request, update request. So this case, in this case also, we are going to call the same backend that we have created in our registry. So we are going to refer that endpoint. Finally, we are going to respond the status of the update request back to the client. So this is the this is the new requirement that came via the business partner to the developer so that the developer has completed the required task now let's see how to test it so first after creating the developer is like use you can use the built-in server runtime to run it and see whether it behaves correctly so you can run it inside the id itself and you can send a, a curl request or uh, using a tool like postman you can test it so it works fine so after that what you need to develop a need only to um, commit that changes to github so in here we have changed that change the coffee shop api basically we are going to add that change xml file and we are going to commit it to github so so this is the it, this is the only required that like, developers task just to develop the required scenario and commit it to github so the rest of the the, the development cycles are like automated so the name and builds and test and development and extractor we have like automated by jenkins so after after the change we can just um, trigger this build pipeline so it will build again with the new changes and it will run the test. So if the tests are passed, we, we ask the Jenkins server to deploy. So in, 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 in any business case, you can decide what to do. If the test pass, you can deploy it to the QA servers and QA environment and see whether it works. And finally, you can deploy it to the, the production environment. 
So in here, this case, we can see our new resource is like successfully built and tested. And finally, we are going to deploy that. So after the deployment, so we have this new existing API with the new resource that is update resource, update an existing order. So we are going to test that update order API, API resource. So let's send a request using Postman to this update order API, API resource. So we can see that it is working fine. So that's for the demo. So as you have seen throughout this webinar, let's summarize it. So, so it, it, it um, shows you that it's very important to have automated systems to cater requirements in agile business platforms. So the business, agile business platforms are tend to change so that they do. With every change, you can give an um, um, like a product if you have this agile business platform set up correctly. So next thing is that we have discussed. So enterprise integrator, WSO enterprise integrator is like capable for addressing like sort of many uh, business scenarios with this connected developer experience. You have seen that we have developed developer experience with uh, with the built-in runtime so that you can run and debug within the tool itself and also you have seen that we the, the wso2 enterprise indicator artifacts are using maven so that maven build test run like goals we can easily use with this wso2 artifact so that would be like very advanced like give a like it's like very advanced giving a um, sort of um, beneficial for you so you, you can just use the existing uh, jenkins like build systems or Travis CI, etc. Um, that's what we have discussed for today. So now it's time for Q&A. Uh, please post if you have any questions regarding this webinar. So we have a question. Uh, the CI/CD pipeline can be implemented in Team City software. Uh, so uh, we are not pretty sure about the Team City uh, system, but uh, if it has a Maven plugin, uh, we can integrate it uh, with uh, Git, like we did in our webinar with Jenkins. And we just need to make sure we execute some Maven. Uh, Maven uh, commands there. If uh, it has a uh, Maven plugin, then we can for sure integrate this team city uh, with the CI CD process. So we have another question. So is it possible to use Travis CI with WSO2 EI configurations? Yeah, of course we can configure Travis, even though we have like demonstrated how to use Jenkins. It is possible to use any kind of um, uh, CI CD tools because they all have Maven, uh, Maven artifact related um, the configurations so that it will run in any kind of platform. So you can easily configure with these um, CI CD tools. So uh, we have another question on uh, the introduced new uh, testing framework. Uh, since it is supported in future releases, is there an alternative for the moment? Like uh, uh, instead of, uh, uh, for sure we will be releasing it for the upcoming release, but uh, until that uh, you can use SOAP UI or any 
Postman scripts and integrate it with uh, Jenkins and uh, get the testing task done for the moment. So uh, we are getting some more questions. Uh, we will uh, answer them via mail. So uh, for now, we will wrap up this uh, webinar, webinar for today. So thank you for joining the webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. And make sure you register for the upcoming WSO2 Enterprise Integrator webinars too.